Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Meza by Cosmotronic. So the Meza is indeed the first compression module that I've ever reviewed. Well, in all honesty, it's the first compression module that I've ever held in my hands. And at first I thought, okay, well, how am I gonna review this? How am I gonna approach this? But when I was reading up on, on this module, but also on compression as a whole, I came to the conclusion that it's essentially a combination of a lot of VCAs, envelope followers, uh, side chaining, and a lot more things around that. Uh, it, it also combines, well, filters and the whole shebang. So I've done all of these things beforehand, but now we really want to tie it all in together into one end of line module. And in this case, it's the Meza. So I do have to thank Cosmotronic for sponsoring this episode, uh, but I feel that this will add so much to your patches as well. So I hope you'll, well, you'll be just enthusiastic about this module after this video but before that I would say make sure you're sitting down have something to drink have something to eat because um, here we go so here we've got the Meza by Cosmotronic and this is the very first compressor module that I've ever reviewed or actually I've ever used so what I've done is I've actually taken all the things that I've done regarding VCA's envelope followers um, side chaining and all of the things that I knew about compression and I've taken all of those things and I've used that as a basis for me to actually understand what was happening here. Before we actually dive into some usability features and uh, some demos, let's run through the actual UI. So here we've got your ratio, which is essentially a dry and wet setting. So all the way to the left, um, it's just dry, the actual dry signal coming through to the outputs, all the way to the right, all uh, the actual wet signal, so the actual compressed signal that you were working with here, coming through to the outputs, and you can then nicely mix between them. Uh, then you've got your attack and release for the actual, um, well, the actual compression that you want to happen, the threshold and the gain, and above that you've got a, a switch for pure and warm and that's of course all about the actual uh, coloration you want to apply to the sounds that this actual module um, outputs and one of the things I really like is this bypass switch which you can easily use to uh, immediately go back to the pure signal coming in and just quickly bypass all of the compression that's happening there. Um, then you've got your actual well cut off uh, filter frequency setting and you've got a small switch with switching between a low pass filter and a high pass filter and this is of course then being used to do the actual compression so more about that later on then you've got your side chain in so if you already have a side chain um, envelope that you want to use for instance your uh, your bass drum uses one of uh, has already ha already has one or if you've got another envelope follower that you want to use you can just use that input and you've got your gain input if you want to do additional well VCAing if you really want to use this as a VCA you can do that and then you've got your left and right inputs you've got CV inputs for attack release and the color frequency right there and then you've got three outputs the envelope which is really nice because that, that's something that you can really use to, on the one hand, visualize what you're doing, but on the other hand, also make sure that you can then use that for other modules as well and your left and right output. So what I wanna do is I just wanna quickly grab the drums from the foundation by Noise Reap, uh, which I just want to quickly pass into my mixer. And I want to make sure that we can still see as much as possible from the actual module right here there you go and if we then grab the envelope and pass that into the es9 that i've got there then we actually might be seeing what we have there so right now we won't be hearing anything and that's not a problem 
because I still need to patch this into my output module. There you go. And then you might actually have something there that you might be able to listen to. So right now, let's make sure we have that. There we go. So as you can see, we immediately see that we have a negative envelope. And that's, of course, exactly what we want, because this is a Again, this is the thing that we want to do. We want to just, just like with side chaining, we just want to make sure that the signal is going to be compressed coming in. So this is the pure signal. As you can see, we're not applying any negative envelopes currently, but we then want to turn it into that. But it's rather harsh, so we want to apply a bit of attack to it and a bit of release. But not too much, of course. So the thing now is, why would you want that? And that's, of course, if you are introducing other sounds to the actual mix that you've got. So let's assume that we've got a very static sound coming in. There you go. So right now I've got this in low pass mode. But I can also switch this to high pass mode. I typically like to keep it somewhere here in the middle and make sure that you barely just touch the actual compression. So this would be something that I would use if this was my complete patch. Not too bad, but you do get that pumping action going on. So I did say that you already have uh, an input there for side chaining. So if I then grab the actual envelope out from the foundation, which luckily enough has that. So now we don't have to worry about anything regarding the actual filter there, but we're now using the actual input from this as the actual side chaining or compression input. If we just turn all of the attack and release down, and now we can just play with the foundation to play with this.
so that's rather nice so let me just uh, make sure that we get this all back to where we were So if we then introduce some other sounds to this, we can actually get some really nice results here. But if we want to change this, so this is the this is the pure sounds that we're passing in. And this is the sound that the compressor actually uses. So I'm just gonna patch in something there. for that I'm just gonna grab some envelopes there and I'm just gonna create some nice sounds right nice right but let's add a bit more of um, some things that we like to have so I might want to introduce a bit of snare to this and we might want to introduce a bit of Afterwards, we could actually start to think about okay, well, how do we make sure that this works in a fully side chained or compressed way? Here we go. I'll just bypass this. So this is the bass line that we've got. down a bit so I think this is a rather nice mix 
So if we then just flip the switch back to the dry sound, this is the, the original one, and this is the one where we created. So it's much more dynamic, it's, it's got much more life to it. So if we then compare this to well, what we might want to grab, let me see if we can actually show that. Here we go. So this is the actual sound that we've got. And if we then start to mix this in, we might want to lower this a bit. And we even might want to consider going to the warm side. And this is exactly what makes those beats really pump, right? So this, again, this is the original one, quite flat, you might say. And if we then introduce compression, so this is a 50-50 mix. There you go. introduce some additional sounds here. I always like to do these kind of things, right? So what I'm doing right now is I'm just patching the Paradox by Noise Reef. And see if we can get some nice sounds out of that. So we might want to replace this with what we're doing with um, the Orna. And back to the owner.
So let's then introduce a bit of reverb. So I'm just going to do a very quick repatch there.
again, I can just keep on playing with this for hours on end if I want. So this is the time for me to just uh, sign off and just get back to the studio. Talk to you in a bit. Cheers. Bye. -bye. So I truly hope you enjoyed this video on the Mazza by Cosmotronic. So one of the key things I truly appreciate about well learning more about compression is the amount of punch it adds to your mix. I was totally unaware of what I was missing out of before I dove into this module and dove into the wonderful world of compression. Uh, in my well, in my understanding, compression was always this this end of line thing that would just uh, equal things out. But just by playing with this thing for a couple of weeks, um, a whole new world opened up for me. And I truly will make sure that compression and the Mesa specifically will be in my, well, my patches until the end of days. So I do have to thank Cosmotronic again for uh, sponsoring this episode because, um, well, they, they've opened my eyes, so to say. So I've been really, well, really enjoying this module and it's, it's, it's got my uh, seal of approval without any sort of doubt. So make sure you grab this ASAP. Uh, that being said, I do want to thank everyone again for uh, taking your time to uh, well watch this video, watch any of the other videos on my channel. And I do want to thank my patrons again specifically, but I also want to point out our, well, um, Discord channel where we have weekly interviews with people within the Eurorack sphere. It's free. Um, there is no, there are no strings at attached. So feel free to join Discord and join any of the conversations that we had. So we've had uh, Walker from Make Noise last week. We've had Corey from Modbap, and we have so many great people lined up. And it's up to you to join and ask your questions that you want to ask during those meets. So make sure that you join that and uh, um, well, read up on the schedule and join. Um, again, don't feel any sort of pressure to do that. It's free, it's up to you to join. Uh, but beyond that, I would just say, well, hope everyone enjoyed this. Have a great day. Please everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you for my next video. Cheers.